Hi, everybody. Hi, you guys. I'm back. We, yes, she's back. back. Isn't it great? Yay, you're here. <laughs> so it's good to see all of you. I hope you had a great couple of weeks since I've seen you. And uh, yeah, so things are ha- happening hot and heavy and um, hot, hot, hot. Keyword I just got home from Ramona. And uh, when I got in my car to leave, it was 103 degrees. So. Um, and it's only 83 here at our house. So, you know, 20 g- degrees difference. It's not too bad. But you survived your first week? I survived my first week. Oh. Only one major meltdown. Oh. And uh, I keep going back for more. So either I'm a crazed teaching fanatic or a sucker for pain and punishment. I don't know what it yeah. is. But actually, it's been a good week. It's good to be with my colleagues. So grateful for them. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the way we are all pulling together to make this happen. And it's so good to see the kids. And yeah. they're, they, I would say a good 70% of them are happy to be back. And the rest mm. of them just, it's not that they're unhappy. Mm. They're just not quite with it yet. Mm. So, so not too bad. Hopefully you can keep that going. Not too bad. For those of you that may not have been with us before, you probably you might not know that Edie is an English teacher. She's up in Ramona. She teaches seniors. Mm-hmm. And so this is class of 2021. And um, our cat is coming into the picture. That's fine. He decided not to. He'll walk across the keyboard at some point. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I teach all seniors mm-hmm. and, um, and it's good. good. It's good. So some lockdown news. Uh, there's a governor's press conference today. No, that, well, that was last. That, oh. was, that was last week. But oh. we're still kind of living in the yeah, the, living the in af- the afterglow, afterglow of that. the press conference. So as you guys know, things are opening up, and and some people are questioning. You know what's happening with the church and what are we doing? And just want you to know that. Um, We don't really have any urgency to move inside right now. And what we're doing right now is working really well. Mm -hmm. Those of you who've been at our Saturday evening gatherings know that it's just a really nice time to be outside and enjoy our San Diego, glorious San Diego weather that we have and to be with one another. And once moving in creates all kinds of complications. So the church leadership, this one among them, are um, they're talking about it and working yeah. with it and, and making plans, but there's no shift anytime soon. And you never know when things are going to change back, so we just mm-hmm. have to take it easy as far as uh, getting back to that. Yeah. So, yeah. But we are we are so blessed, so blessed to have a great mm-hmm. campus, great location, great facilities, great equipment, great people. You know, we just are really, really mm-hmm. blessed. And as a matter of fact, as a result, some people that are looking for that sort of thing, we've seen a lot of new faces yeah, showing up at the church too, which is really, yeah. which is really cool. We and it. we've seen some familiar ones too, yes. you guys. So it's always good to see you guys. It really there. is. So. Thanks. Thanks for the, those of you that kind of take a chance and, and uh, get out like that. And uh, we do appreciate that. So we look forward to seeing you back at church this Saturday at 6 p.m. And Sunday online at 9 o'clock. So that's what's happening with City View Church this weekend. And you have an update on Pastor's brother, don't you? Well, yes. He got uh, uh, basically the good report. If You might have seen it online already, but it's great news. He's he's now tested negative. So COVID negative. Um, Of course, he's been, uh, his body's been through a lot. And he's been almost two months now, pretty much an induced coma. So obviously a lot to bounce back from in that and a lot of uh, recovery that still needs to happen. But uh, as a matter of fact, even in terms of just being responsive and that sort of thing, still just kind of taking it one step at a time. And there's been some good indicators there, but uh, we're just kind of, um, but so still much of a need for prayer, but he's not in ICU anymore. He's moved to a a rehab center uh, with plenty of care and, uh, and on, on the road to recovery, but you're, prayer and the Lord's touch is still needed. For Anthony, and that's Pastor's yes. brother, Anthony. Mm-hmm. Yes. So rumor has it, we have a new home for our videos, honey. Oh, you yeah. too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I told him about it last week, but uh, but again, some of you might not have heard yet. So just we would, we've been able to put all of our videos. Some people have said, hey, I can't, I'm not on Facebook. I know you are because you're here. But uh, if you're not on Facebook, um, you know, what do you do? And so a lot of people said their friends or they themselves would like to see us have access. So now the entire planet has access to our videos uh, because they're on YouTube. So just go to YouTube, enter City View 55, 
Uh, there's actually a link on our page here as well, so you can get to it from there. But City View 55, just search that on YouTube and uh, got all of our good content. We've archived Don't some as us. well. Mm -hmm. Anyone oh in the world that could be in. That's really kind of great. They could frightening. be in Madagascar. Oh. They could be in Mandalay. Okay. Anywhere. So there we go. You know, we also started this week, and I think a lot of people will be interested in this. We are a heart. We are a church with a heart for missions, and uh, so we have an opportunity now through our once a week. We, uh, you know, missionaries they're always on the cutting edge of things, and so they are able to be with us through the videos that they make, and so they're creating special special videos just for us uh, to address us. So that's on Thursday. That's re that's released, but on the church website. Uh, I think this one I did put on our website, but it's great. So Jason Friend and oh, and Cindy are uh, oh, with, I us love their heart. with Latin America Child Care and all that they That's do cool. throughout the, uh, the the Latin America world in terms of uh, uh, outreaches and, and evangelistic events, that sort of thing. Uh, we get to hear from them. And they've been partners with us at City View Church for a couple of decades now. So great to hear from so them. So where would we find that? Uh, it's going to be on the City View Church page, and uh, so and, the church's homepage. Yes, okay. and I think they'll probably be putting those. As a matter of fact, I know that they will also be putting those on this on the City View uh, uh, YouTube page as well, okay. so you can find it there also. So we, there's two different pages on YouTube. There's the City View page plus the City View 55 page. So. That's okay. where they'll be. Cool. That is so cool. Yeah, it's nice. So uh, this week we do have Sandy Grove RN. Yeah. Right? Yes. We missed our cute Sandy Grove R -N. RN. Um, and she's talking about influenza season. Yep, it's here. Boy. Oh, who knew? <laughs> yeah. Tis the season. Yeah. So so get your shopping done now. But um, but um, but this is an important time. And, mm -hmm. of course, you wonder with COVID and everything else, you know, what do we do? Are things different? Uh, well, there are some things that are different, so we have some good information for yeah. you on that. Yeah. And then um, we will close with prayer after we are finished looking at Paul's letter to the Philippians. Uh, we'll pr close with prayers, we always do, for mm -hmm. the pandemic, for you. Um, and November's coming. Yeah. So between, we have, what, two months now before the election. Yeah. So it's going to be a hot and heavy two months. Yeah. So we'll be praying for that as well. So, Paul's um, prison epistles, do you want me to begin or you want to go for it? You know what? They didn't get to hear you last week, so why don't you So I get to make up for, for it. it. And this is a cool. little bit of intro that we're kind of sharing, yeah. just just for those of you that might not have joined us before. You might have heard this yeah. before, but I, but I think it'll help. It to kind just of a quick recap. Set the scene. So, just a quick reminder, we are in um, Philippians 1, the later verses in Philippians today, but just mm -hmm. a quick reminder. Paul is in prison. He's under house arrest, kind of like we have been for months here. Um, and he is living in lockdown. And we are looking at this to gain a greater understanding of how we can live with joy in the midst of lockdown, how we can live with purpose yes. and how we can live with hope yep. in the midst of lockdown. And so that's what's happening here. So um, what are Paul's words for us as he was sheltering in place? We're looking at Philippians 1, verses 27 through 30 today. So I'm going to begin with verses, verse 27. So imagine Paul being in lockdown. He got visitors. Um, you know, there's a lot of historical evidence that people would come and visit him and speak with him and eat and dine with him and um, spend time with him and write letters for him. And, and it was not uncommon for public officials and people from the community to come and visit him. So even though he was in lockdown, he had a very vibrant ministry. And um, to the people who were locking him down, even. And so Paul had, Paul was poised in a very unique situation for spreading the gospel to people who really might otherwise not have been able to hear it. And if you think about it, that's kind of like us with our current situation. Uh, we may be in lockdown, but I know for us, we've had a lot more interaction with our neighbors. We've had a lot more opportunity to. Uh, portray God and God's love and Jesus to the people walking by. So that's what verse 27 says. And I love what Paul says here. Whatever happens, whatever happens, 
conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, the meaning of the word gospel, one of the meanings of it is good news. Worthy of the manner of the good news of Christ. And uh, when I hear good news, when I hear good news, I think of positivity. I think of joy. Yeah. I think of hope. And and when I what I read in this verse is that Paul is reminding us, whatever happens, whatever happens, you go out and somebody has torn off the mirror on your car because they drove too close in the street. Whatever happens, reflect that good news. This car is going to burn. Okay? It's not an eternal thing. It's going to be gone. Whatever happens, reflect the good news of Christ Jesus. Um, we get some bad news sometimes. So we're, what do we do then? We reflect the hope of Jesus. We get tired and frustrated sometimes. That was me yesterday. I came home and I just laid down on my bed and I just laid there. And because I was tired, I had pretty major technical meltdown in class yesterday that really messed up my class. And I just, I was spent. I just came home and laid down. But during the course of it, I tried to conduct myself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Trying to show grace, trying to show self-control, trying to show kindness in my words, in my actions, in my attitude. I don't know that I got an A plus on it, but I wasn't down in the C's and D's. I was somewhere B and A plus and actually had some fun time with the family last night because I was so tired. There was no filter and I was just really <laughs> goofy. So, so I guess even bringing joy with our goofiness is a way of um, bringing the joy of Christ. She's a to, wonder when she's goofy. <laughs> it's pretty scary. Anyway, so what do you have to say, honey? Well, you know, I just in wanted, verse twenty six, I was wanted to tag on one thing. Whatever happens, because uh, mm -hmm. in the world a lot of crazy things are happening as well, mm -hmm. and um, it, it's it's sometimes just unbelievable the things mm -hmm. that we hear people say, mm -hmm. uh, the kind of things that come out of people's mouths. Um, but whatever whatever happens, whether it's division, whether it's politics, whether it's accusations, whether it's false news, whatever it might be, whatever happens. Conduct yourself in the manner that's worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we're seeing a lot of things that yeah. we've never been exposed to yeah. before. Yeah. And um, and I have seen and been tempted to myself kind of respond in ways that I think are unbecoming mm -hmm. um, as believers. And it's like, why are followers of, followers of Christ kind of following into the patterns of, of the adversaries? And so we just have to watch ourselves on that yeah. sort of thing and be very, very careful because... Less is more. Yeah. Yeah. Less is more in yeah. those situations. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Paul continues there, and, and he's on, in verse uh, in the next verse. He says, "Then, whether I come and see you, on, you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, mm. striving together as one for the faith of the gospel." Mm without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. <laughs> this is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by God. And so two things mm -hmm. I want to point out here. First is that we stand together, that you're firm in the spirit. Well, mm -hmm. how do you do that when you're scattered mm -hmm. all over the city yeah. and you're in your homes? Well, yeah. there is a very, I think you probably thought of it already, which is the way that we stand together is in the unity we have in the faith. The, um, mm -hmm. what we do believe in Jesus Christ is something that continues to unite us together. Mm -hmm. We also know that there's one spirit, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, uh, one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Those are the ways that we continue mm -hmm. to stay together. We remain focused on those things. Um, and he even says striving, striving together. So it means it's like, just don't just to kind of casually go along with it, but let's look for ways that's just with, where we can be intentional about mm -hmm. about um, how we can agree to disagree, if that's necessary, the things that you've seen things that divide believers, and, and if we find ourselves in that same pattern where this is something that uh, divides us, there is some, there is, there's a statement, and I know many of you have heard it in over, over the years that I think is very, very important, very helpful to us at this time. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's attributed to different, different people, 
uh, Philip Melanchthon, who was Martin Luther's uh, uh, associate. Uh, but I think a lot of people trace it back to St. Augustine. And Augustine said this, but we'll, we'll, we'll say that a lot of people are, are, uh, are, are kind of in the, uh, the uh, pedi pedigree of this, of this statement, this wonderful statement. And basically it is this, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, and in all things, charity. Mm. What does that say? Mm. In essentials, the things that unite us, the things that are most important to us, with, there needs to be unity. We need to hold on to that because, because the second part of this uh, formula is in non-essentials, liberty. In other words, are things like, um, uh, let's say, the, the thing that comes, <laughs> keeps coming to mind is masks. Okay, it's the okay. elephant in the room. Uh, uh, don't, have you noticed that not everybody agrees on masks or social distancing or various other things like that? Would you consider that to be an essential? Is this something we hear talked about often in Scripture? Did Jesus really draw attention to following sort of these uh, social uh, rules that are part of part of life? Um, I think that we can agree that these would fall into the category of non-essentials. They're not specifically addressed in Bible. So what is what is the instruction? Liberty, liberty. Allow other people to uh, have some freedom to believe what they believe. Uh, maybe even find ourselves being more of an interviewer rather than a, who, asking questions about what people believe rather than mm -hmm. saying it's really important that I get my idea out here. Or rather than an accuser. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Or someone that's just going to gonna persuade the whole world that uh, they're in the right when right. chances are a lot of people have made up their minds about a lot of in these the things. Yeah. In the non-essentials. And this is a bigger category. I'm sorry that yeah. I picked a picked yeah. one example that might might kind of make us think that there's only one, but there's a lot of things that fall it could into be that. like buying American cars versus foreign cars. <laughs> there's something a little less incendiary. Okay. That's a non-essential. You think so? Yeah. I don't think so. I think you're I don't know. Oh, we have all imported. There was, so. I hope you okay. are a little drunk. Anyway, there. so, and then for. And, and then the last area is in all things charity. charity. My goodness, that is yeah. so important, people. Uh, certainly there is no. Uh, theme of, of the message of Jesus Christ of the New Testament, then, for example, Paul saying that above uh, that three things endure faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love, right? So faith might mean, okay, my, the tenets of my faith, maybe I need to argue those. Hope, maybe the things that I am looking forward to or future oriented. The greatest of these things is love. Mm -hmm. And so they will know we are Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. um, they will that uh, you must love one another as I as the uh, be one as the Father and I are one. Jesus said, "There are so many things that point to that, and so so important that we make that the top of the list in terms of uh, what Paul is saying. You're striving together as one for the faith of the gospel." That's good. That's good. And then he tells us why why we are to strive together and why are we not to be frightened in any way by those who oppose us he says for it has been granted to you because we are able to do this sorry i get my hands going okay because it has been granted to us on behalf of christ okay not only to believe in him but also to suffer for him so we walk through these challenges that we face in our lives. We walk through the challenges of uh, opposition. We walk through the challenges of walking through a situation like we face in the United States right now. So many, so many bombshells out there. Uh, we walk through a situation and we walk through this because Christ is with us. And we've been given the privilege of believing in him. We know him. We know the one who created the foundations of the earth. We know the one who has granted us eternal life. We know that whatever happens here on the face of the earth, ultimately we are going to be with our Savior and the Father in heaven. We have that blessed hope to look forward to and to sustain us throughout the opposition and the struggles that we face. And we need to keep firm on that. We need to keep firm on that. 
And in light of that, in light of that eternity, in light of that promise, in light of that assurance of Christ's love for us, all these other things fall away. All these other things fall away. And we can walk forward. We can walk forward proclaiming the gospel of Christ. We can walk forward striving to come together in unity. We can walk forward encouraging one another. And all the more as we see the day drawing near, we can walk forward in this and not being frightened in any way by those who oppose us. Because we know that we have been granted these things on the behalf of Christ. And this verse goes on to say, and this is the harder part of this. We've been given the privilege to believe in him, but we've also been given the privilege to suffer for him. And there are many passages in the Bible where it talks about us identifying with Christ in his sufferings. Now, I don't know about you, but I really don't suffer that much. My heart hurts and pines and grieves for the sadness and the wrongs that are going on in our world. But I am not physically threatened. I am not, my livelihood is not taken because I'm a Christian. My life is not threatened. We have so many privileges here in the United States. Um, and our suffering is not the same as Paul's by any means. But we do have, we do have the, the call to walk through these with the grace and the peace and the joy and the reality, the good news of the gospel in Jesus. So we're going to uh, bring this to a close now. So, honey, do you want to wrap us up in prayer? Sure. And um, did mention at the beginning that the three things that we want to pray for, we want to continue to pray for an end to this pandemic. Um, and I think we also want to pray for there's still hot spots in the United States, mm -hmm. many places where there's just a need for justice mm -hmm. with a sense of righteousness. And so let's pray for that. And then for the elections uh, today, I think marks 60 days. So this last 60 days is usually a roller coaster. So get ready. You're, we're going to just uh, be exposed to all kinds Monitor of stuff. Monitor your yeah. intake. <laughs> yeah. But um, vote, plan to vote yeah. and uh, vote with wisdom and seek the Lord. There's a lot of things out there to vote for that we want to be wise as we do. So. So, Lord, we do pray this this time, Father, when we come together, we are reminded to to pray for an end to this pandemic. Our nation is healing. Our, our, our nation is hurting. Our world is hurting. You did say, if my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek their face and turn from their wicked ways, then you would hear from heaven You would that you would answer our prayers and you would heal our land. So, Lord, that's what we are asking for today. Your promise stands true today. We're so thankful for it. So be with those who are suffering from COVID. We pray with frontline workers. Continue to keep them safe. Pray for our frontlines people, our police and other father that are working so hard to maintain um, peace in our land. We do pray for businesses and that you would help them to be um, sustained and just be with business owners and workers, Father God, as they work through financial um, droughts and be with those in places of authority that have to make such difficult decisions. We ask that you would bless, that you would, that you would cause them to call upon you and to listen for your voice, Father. We ask you to do that. Lord, we pray for um, the for justice with a sense of righteousness across our land, not only in Kenosha, but every city from Portland to, to the East Coast, to Florida, that is experiencing difficulties, Father, uh, and for all the issues behind each one of those, so complicated, so multi-layered, but you have wisdom. We pray that you would, that you would be glorified in each of these situations, that you would be honored and that justice would prevail. Your justice, King Jesus. And finally, we pray for the elections. We just pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be with America. There is such a divided spirit in our land, and we all see that. We hear it every day. Father, my prayer is for, I want to be a person who is a minister of reconciliation, one who brings peace to the situation and not fuel for the flames that I bring calm and respect for one another and a sense of civility. That is my prayer for me 
Um, Father, I pray for each one, Father, that desires the same things, that you would help us to not be be uh, ignited by inflammatory words, but, Father, to resp- respond with the calmness and the spirit of, of, of peace and wisdom in Jesus Christ. And all these things we pray in your wonderful name. Amen. 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 Okay, you guys, have a great week. Yes. Sandy's coming up. Yes, yes. Love you. Hope yes. to see you tomorrow night thanks at for, church. And thanks for joining. Okay. We, we, we have to sign off with this. So stay tuned for S- Sandy Grove R and We're out of sync. We'll That's get, okay. We'll we get love it. you guys. We'll get it right. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>